Hi there, it's Mary Charleston here from 5minutemarketing.com. We're doing the first of our deep dives into trends uh, for 2020 in terms of marketing trends. And you'll recall our first trend was around influencer marketing maturing, the fact that it has exploded the last couple of years. So we know that you know, a lot of the things around uh, influencer marketing, they were kind of like charlatans that were invited to the party. Uh, they claim to have influence and we've seen a lot of fake followers and lots of kind of negative press around this. So in 2020, we talk about influencer marketing maturing and becoming much more formalized. Um, I talked about that in my, my top line summary video. Today, we're gonna take a look at tactics uh, that you can put into place as a marketer who employs or is thinking of employing influencers. So the first one would be looking at highly vetting your influencers. Um, that could come through utilizing agencies. Um, there's a lot of agencies have sprung up uh, to list influencers, uh, but taking a look at ones who actually go out looking for influencers as opposed to influencers who apply to be part of them or an influencer actually comes to you versus uh, you actually going and finding them. I think we've reached that level of maturity around influencers where we need to formalize how we actually find them. Um, a lot of these agencies will be utilizing things around artificial intelligence to get rid of fake followers, to essentially vet and know that these influencers have some clout uh, that they say that they're coming with. The other thing is consider using multiple micro influencers as opposed to major mega influencers. Those those uh, micro influencers, you know, you know, two thousand to five thousand followers on a platform, or maybe have two platforms where they have a significant following. They generally um, or generally come with a high level of engagement with those followers because there's fewer of them. And if they've built it over time, uh, that it's likely a fairly authentic audience. If you have multiples of those micro influencers versus uh, you know somebody who comes with you know a couple hundred thousand followers and uh, you know kind of big ticket attached to them, I think the micro influencer might be uh, a great way to go on this in terms of um, you know if you can't afford to vet, you can tell fairly quickly a micro influencer whether or not they're legit or not. Uh, second thing there is to think of influencer more as a content creator. Uh, not a single platform influencer. And I think this is really important um, to consider uh, multiple platform influencer uh, and take a look at those multiple platforms and how they align with your audience. An example might be uh, an influencer who is uh, has a lot of following on Instagram, YouTube, and is an early adopter on TikTok. Would be a nice combination for somebody who's trying to hit somebody in their 20s, uh, your teens in their 20s, perhaps into early 30s, um, that that could be a good platform combination. Uh, somebody who's really strong on Facebook, who's uh, on Twitter, uh, has a blog, an e-newsletter, could be for an older audience, 45 and above, and, um, you know, and and maybe you know add into that YouTube or something like that, where there's a combination of platforms which allows them to do a combination of creative as well. So look for, that's a second tip, is look for a content creator, uh, not just a single platform influencer. Um, third thing, and it dovetails nicely into that, and I would say is think of uh, influencers more as content, um, they're storytellers. Uh, not just a, you know, just a, a single post or a single video type of uh, person. So you're looking for someone who has talents in writing, photography, video, uh, somebody who is a creative, right? They're a storyteller, um, somebody who understands the, the arc of the story, uh, how to pull uh, readers or viewers or listeners in. Uh, someone who uh, would respond to like a creative brief, uh, a more detailed kind of analysis of what it is we're trying to accomplish. Something more like we've had traditionally with uh, ad agencies, where you would take a look at, you know, here's the audience, here's the objective that we have as a business or a brand, here's the look and the feel, here's our positioning within the marketplace, within our competitors, and uh, use a creative brief in a more formal kind of thing for their storytelling. Obviously, we don't want to handcuff them as creators, content creators. That's part of why we're, we're, uh, we're employing them. Uh, so you want them to interpret so that they can reach out and know what resonates with their audience. But you want to give them a little bit more kind of formal, um, uh, formal outline 
and uh, think of them as storytellers. Uh, fourth thing I think we can do uh, to help us with this thing around uh, influencer is analysis and uh, really kind of getting into the depths of audience uh, demographics and match and digging into that before we actually employ them and that's across platforms taking a look at impressions engagement and um, again maybe using AI um, you know to, to kind of feather out any of those you know kind of fake bot following and fake engagement kind of um, kind of things in their analysis um, essentially we're looking for conversion and and sales lift and so uh, on an, and a return on our, our on our investment and so analysis is going to become a major part of this uh, taking a look at what they have done in the past and uh, how that fits in uh, the fifth one and I think this is a, a it's a huge tip and that's looking at paid amplification on top of influencer marketing. The reason why I say that is, is that we've thought of influencer marketing as, um, you know, we're buying reach and possible influence. And I think that needs to shift in 2020 to we're buying audience and a relationship. And then we're going to put money on top of that to ensure that we reach that entire audience and amplify out to them and possible lookalike audiences is on top of that. But what we're going to get with that paid, um, that, that paid amplification is the back end analytics and measurement. And that's where we're going to see, you know, conversion, sales uplift, see them in the funnel. We're going to be able to, you know, to understand kind of some of that back end. And if we do some paid stuff on top of it, we get all of that. So I think there's that shift. And so consider micro influencers, maybe paying them a little bit less than some of those huge, huge influencers. And then you're, you're buying the audience and the relationship and then adding paid amplification on top of that to create specific audiences and lookalike audiences. I think that's gonna be a major part of this. Essentially what we're looking for at the end of this, and it's point number six, is an authentic advocate. Um, and influencers on more of a long-term relationship, not single one-off dates, a little bit more like, um, you know, it's like a, it's a short-term marriage, but it's uh, you know something that's a little bit more of a of a of a, a relationship where they work back and forth with with each other. You know the potential for co-creation of products or services, uh, where the influencer receives a royalty from something, and so there's a vested interest in a longer-term play for them. Along with that, I think we need to also recognize the potential. Um, uh, you know, uh, potential damage that an influencer could do who's not authentic um, and genuine. And so making sure that an influencer um, is is who they are outside of their work with you as, as a brand. And so what I mean by that is somebody who's, you know, they're vegetarian, uh, they're talking about, you know, vegetarian, uh, vegan foods and whatnot, and then somebody snaps a photo of them at a steakhouse. Um, that's not going to fly. You know, EV cars, uh, somebody advocating around electronic vehicles, then they're seen driving a truck, a gas guzzling truck or whatever. I think we're going to see influencers being taken more like celebrities, which essentially in their own communities, that's the way they're viewed. And we've seen what's happened with celebrities who've fallen on their sword in the past. You know, Tiger Woods is a great example. But that type of thing uh, we need to be very much cautious of when we're hiring influencers. And I'd say the best uh, hedge against that is understanding who that person is, doing a Google search on them, uh, understanding a little bit more of their background, uh, what shows up and taking a look back into their feeds on various other things that they have posted and talked about and just getting a sense of what kind of genuine, authentic person are they to be acting as an advocate for what they're being hired for. So that's some of our deeper dives into influencer marketing, a, a huge growth area, but also an area which is maturing uh, in 2020. Thanks for joining us.